Hello everyone. Coming again with the series of the operatives in gynecology and obstetrics, uh, we are discussing vaginal hysterectomy today. I have taken only the key points. Anyone who has not watched the abdominal hysterectomy lecture, please watch that first because we have taken the basics of hysterectomy in that lecture. But once again, just for a recap, I am telling that in hysterectomy, this is the uterus, there are three major clamps that we are placing for taking the specimen out. One at the cornual structures, cornual structure means your round ligament, fallopian tube and the ovarian ligament, three things are there at the cornua. Second clamp comes at the level of the uterine artery which is the level of the isthmus or the internal os. And the third clamp comes at the level of the cervix, which is your uterosacral ligaments and your cardinal ligaments. So, these are the three clamps which we need to remember day in and day out for performing any gynecological surgeries, mainly hysterectomies. So, in our abdominal hysterectomy thing, we saw that we start from the fundus. We start applying clamps like 1, 2, 3 and then we remove the specimen. But in cases of vaginal hysterectomy, as the name suggests, our approach is vaginal. So, the patient is given a lithotomy position. Lithotomy means the patient is in a dorsal position with the vagina exposed. So, if our approach is vaginal, so first thing what we will see from down below is the cervix, right? So, our clamps will move from down upwards. This will become our first clamp. This is the only crux. Difference between abdominal and vaginal hysterectomy. Here, we will go from down upwards. So, this is our first clamp, uterosacral and cardinal ligaments. Second clamp is the uterine artery and the third one is the cornwall structure. This way we are taking the specimen out. So, if we compare it with abdominal hysterectomy, in abdominal hysterectomy we are putting an incision over the abdomen. So, the patient will have a scar on the abdomen, but in vagina there is no scar on the body anywhere because we are going through a natural orifice, point number one. Point number two, our clamps. In abdominal hysterectomy we are coming one, two, three. In vaginal hysterectomy we are going one, two, three, right? And in vaginal hysterectomy, it is like a bit of a blind procedure. The initial incision is a bit blind and we are not able to assess the other abdominal things. We are not able to see anything. We see only the cervix and then we start proceeding from the cervical level. So, what are the indications and types of vaginal hysterectomy? When do we decide that we want to go vaginally? Prolapse uterus. The uterus is already coming out from the vagina. Prolapse uterus is a condition in which the ligaments and the attachments of the uterus, the supports of the uterus, they become lax and the uterus, the cervix along with vagina comes out and it pulls the urinary bladder and the rectum with it. So, we have to perform a vaginal hysterectomy at that point. The other ones are non-descent vaginal hysterectomy. What does that mean? Non-descent means there is no prolapse. There is no prolapse, still we are performing for other gynae indications. For example, there are small fibroids. Small means less than 24 weeks pregnant uterine size uterus. Or there is uh, some other causes, there is some polyp, adenomyosis, other causes of AOB, where the patient wants a scarless surgery, then in those cases we can go for a non-descent vaginal hysterectomy. Now starting with the steps of the procedure, position is lithotomy. In cases of other hysterectomies like abdominal hysterectomy, the patient will be in a supine position because we need to keep a incision on the abdomen. In cases of Laparoscopic hysterectomy, the position is modified treadmill and Burke's position, but here it is lithotomy position. The choice of anesthesia is spinal anesthesia. Generally, most of the gynae surgeries which are not laparoscopic are performed in spinal anesthesia because we are going to work in the lower half of the abdomen. Now, how do we start? Like our patient is in the lithotomy position like this with the vagina exposed. So, we will put a speculum over here, 
look at the cervix and catch hold of the cervix with the help of a vulcellum. We will be discussing these instruments also that how do they look and how do we operate with these instruments. So, a speculum is inserted, we inspect the cervix and then we catch hold of that cervix like this. You can see that there is a speculum. The instrument either it could be vulcellum or a tenaculum. What now we inspect? There is a retractor over here, there is a retractor here, we are holding the cervix. Now if you see the anatomy, it is something like this. Cervix is going inside the vagina, so there is a point here where the vagina ends and the smooth surface of the cervix begin. We need to look for that point because if we go for an incorrect surgical incision, we may either damage the bladder or we cannot find the plane and we land up ending in cervical tissue. So, we need to find the right plane cervical vaginal junction. This is your cervical vaginal junction where the vagina ends and the smooth epithelium of the cervix begin. And normal vagina is a potential space. It contains rugosity. What do we mean by rugosity? Undulated appearance. Vagina normally is, there is no space in a normal vagina, but if we want to create a space, we can create at that place. So, the epithelium is rugous. So, now the normal rugae of the vagina end at a place and the smooth incision start. So, if we, the smooth cervix and the vagina, this is the cervical vaginal junction. This is your smooth cervical epithelium, this is the rugosity of the vagina. So, if we put an incision over here, we will end up in trouble because we will not find this plane. So, first of all, we will look for a place where the rugae are starting or in other words, the rugae of vagina are ending and the smooth cervical epithelium starting. I hope I am making myself clear. Your first incision is very, very important for the rest of the surgery. So, anteriorly, we put a circumferential incision, right? But before putting the incision, what can we do to decrease the blood loss? As we know that vagina is a very, very densely supplied structure with blood vessels. So, if we put an incision like this only, it will bleed profusely and it will be difficult to proceed further. So, first of all, we do a hydro dissection. What do we mean by hydro dissection? Hydro means water and dissection means to separate, right? to separate in the right plane. So, we take normal saline and put a bit of adrenaline into it. Why adrenaline? Because adrenaline causes local vasoconstriction and it stops small, small bleeders at that point. So, what I was telling that at this junction, first we infiltrate normal saline with adrenaline anteriorly and posteriorly and laterally and we create a space between the right planes and then we put an incision. So, hydro dissection done circumferentially at the cervico vaginal junction located at the place where the vaginal rugosity ends and then the incisions are made anteriorly and posteriorly. You, you will have to remember that the patient anterior and posterior becomes up and down once your patient is in the lithotomy position. Just think in your mind that the patient is in lithotomy position which I drawn and the anterior thing you can see it from the top and the posterior one is lying on the OT table. Now, the anterior incision is from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock position if we are talking around the clock. So, from 10 o'clock, this is your clock, this is 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, right? So, from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, we put a round incision anteriorly and we try and separate the vagina from the cervix. We want to create a plane between the vagina and the cervix so that we can proceed straight to the peritoneum. And posteriorly from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock, this is your 4 o'clock, this is your 8 o'clock, we put a circumferential incision because we want to separate the cervix from the vagina all around. Now, what is your incision site? Just have a, another look. This is an another view. The whole uterus is lying like that. Mostly if you are performing it in cases of prolapse uterus, you find an elongated cervix because of the normal 
course of the disease because the normal course of the disease says that the uterus starts prolapsing. So, it comes out with a long uh, cervix. So, this is the anterior point, this is the posterior point. How can we say this is, see, we trace it from here. This is the fundus of the uterus, right? This is your peritoneum. So, this is your anterior pouch. This is urinary bladder. This black space, we need to traverse this black space. This is the vesico uterine space. Vesico means urinary bladder, uterine means uterus. So, the space between the urinary bladder and the uterus, where there is this space, we need to traverse this space so that we do not injure the bladder, we do not land up in the uterine tissue and we go straight to the peritoneum because we want to open that peritoneum. If you remember, we read in the abdominal hysterectomy lecture that we need to open the peritoneum, number one, to keep the other vital structures away, the ureter, the bladder and everything because they fall off once the peritoneum is opened up, number one. Number two, we need to be meticulous about the things that we are clamping and cutting. So, if you want to clamp the uterine artery, you need to open the peritoneum, right? So, anteriorly we want to traverse this space and posteriorly this is the cul de sac or the pouch of Douglas. What is cul de sac? It is between the posterior wall of the uterus and the anterior wall of the rectum. So, this fold of the peritoneum, we need to go through this place. And the thing which is holding our cervix is the tenaculum with sharp teeth, right? So, this is your anterior pouch exam question. They generally ask what do you mean by anterior pouch? What is your posterior pouch? Anterior pouch is the vesico uterine pouch and the posterior one is the cul de sac or the pouch of Douglas. Pubo cervical fibers. This is your symphysis pubis. This is your bladder and this is your uterus. So, there are supporting fibers for bladder and uterus which are coming from pubis, symphysis pubis to the cervix. So, pubo cervical fibers are cut, they are cut sharply and a space is created between the urinary bladder and cervix. This is the very, very essential point in vaginal hysterectomy to create the right space. Posteriorly, a loose fold of vagina along with peritoneum is held with an Ellis forceps and it is cut sharply to open it up and to open the pouch of Douglas. Now, you can see we have removed the bladder, we are in the right space. So, once you are in the right space of the vesico uterine pouch, you will find a thin layer of peritoneum covering. You need to identify this peritoneum and cut open it here. And here you can see, right? So, if we see in the intraoperative field, what you will look, you will find your cervix here, vagina retracting behind the retractor now because we are now created a space between the vagina and the cervix. So, between in the right plane, once you take the vagina up and cervix down, you will find the peritoneal fold a thin peritoneal fold in between that space and you cut open it sharply with the help of scissors. Similarly, posterior fold. This is your posterior fold. Just look at the tip of the cervix. I will show you. In this last thing, the tip of the cervix is facing downwards. So, this is the anterior place we are, we are operating. Here, the cervix is facing upwards. Your instrument, this tenaculum has taken the cervix upwards. So, this is the posterior fold where we are operating. So, here also we have put down the vagina. Now, we are cutting open the peritoneal fold with the help of forceps and scissors. So, once we have opened the pouches, now half of the thing is already done. Now, you have to apply your clamps which we studied in the starting and just proceed with the procedure. Bilateral uterosacrals and cardinal ligaments are clamped, cut and transfixed. This is our first clamp. We are going from below upwards and we have entered into the peritoneum already. Now, in this figure you can see, now look at the tip of the cervix. It is facing like this. So, this is the lateral part what we are seeing. Laterally, you will find uterosacral and cardinal ligaments attached to the body of the cervix. This is our clamp. This way we clamp, cut and transfix as we were doing in our abdominal hysterectomies. Similarly, 
uterosacral ligament cut now we are cutting the cardinal ligaments generally both of them can be taken in the same clamp also what is the use of this thing why are we clamping cutting and ligating and keeping it away just see the anatomy this is your ureter this is your uterine artery which is coming the whole anatomy the approach to the anatomy changes once our approach changes so the anatomy which we study in our ug days or pg days is the anatomy of the abdomen now look at the anatomy from the vaginal side this is your cervix this is your cervix so the artery needs to come somewhere near the internal os or the isthmus so once your uterosacral and cardinal ligaments are identified or the pouches the fold of the peritoneum it rises from the uterine artery if you don't cut these structures if you don't cut open the peritoneum you may well ligate the ureter with the uterine artery you may damage the ureter right so it's very very important to cut open these ligaments to cut open this peritoneum so that the ureter falls off see the ureter is coming so close over here and now i have released this i have released these ligaments i have opened the peritoneum so with these structures the ureter which was actually lying just below the uterine artery it goes back now the second clamp the uterine arteries are clamped cut and ligated first clamp was at the uterosacral cardinal second one at the uterine artery and then the third clamp comes you are easily able to identify the round ligament so the conval structures are clamped cut and transfixed this way with three clamp procedure in a normal size uterus you are able to take out the uterus but if the uterus was a bit bigger in size or you were performing a non descent vaginal hysterectomy then you may have to apply one or two more clamps or you may have to take out the uterus from coring procedure what does that mean coring means removing the tissue in piecemeal manner because for a normal size uterus or a small bulky uterus you can take it out like that but if it is big bigger than 12 to 14 weeks of pregnant uterine in size then you have to actually peel the surface of the uterus and take it out from the orifice of vagina this is a picture showing how we clamp the uterine artery the important thing is that every other clamp that you place should be medial to the previous clamp so these were the clamped cardinal ligaments and the uterosacral and this is the uterine artery between the broad ligament so whatever clamp we place whether it is abdominal hysterectomy or the vaginal hysterectomy to prevent injuries to the ureter we need to go as close to the uterus as possible now once what the three clamps are being done we have removed the uterus now we check for bleeding mainly from our main pedicles that whether there is any active bleeding or not a complete hemostasis is to be made at this point of time this is your patient in the lithotomy position and you are checking for the bleeding from this open vaginal wound right now what all can be done if it was a non descent that means there was no prolapse so at the same time you can close the vault as we were doing in our abdominal hysterectomy cases with the help of vicryl the suture of choice here in the complete is just is vicryl just like what we have done in the abdominal hysterectomy right if there was no descent so we can close it right now but if it was a case of descent that means with the uterus the vagina was also coming outside so your vault may well be lying outside the introitus at this time what to do at that time we need to do a colpo suspension colpo suspension means colpus means vagina and suspend mean to tuck it up so that the patient is not having the problem of prolapse there are procedures by which you can tuck that means you can either tie it with the uterosacral ligaments or the sacrospinous ligament at the same time and if the bladder was also coming out that means the patient was having cystocere also all these will be taking in detail in prolapse uterus also but if the bladder was also coming out at that time so anterior vaginal wall needs a repair so we repair the anterior vaginal wall at the same time so that the cystocele gets reduced 
So, simple hysterectomy is in non descent vaginal hysterectomy, we do only hysterectomy and we close the vault. But if it was a case of prolapse uterus, you need to do reparative surgeries after hysterectomy. You need to repair the anterior vagina or you need to do a colpo suspension. And with this, your vaginal hysterectomy gets finished. Thank you so much.